and I'd kind of messed up my final year. I'd struggled with depression and things like that and had been just going out and drinking a lot. I was sleeping with a lot of people and I thought I was having fun, but when I look back at it now, I think probably 80% of the time I probably wasn't having fun. I think it was more desperation. Victoria's chaotic lifestyle meant she often forgot to take her pill. When I went home with somebody, I would know that I was going to have unprotected sex. I knew that I was going to be stupid. <laughs> Just can't talk about it with people back then. Couldn't, couldn't do it. Didn't want them to talk about it. Didn't want to have to deal with that kind of thing. Too much reality. I knew that the last person I'd slept with, I just knew that I was pregnant. I knew it, and it was a miracle that it happened, hadn't happened sooner. After confirming she was pregnant, Victoria went to her parents with the news. And they both came in to the lounge and just sat next to me on the sofa and just held my hand and just asked me what I wanted to do. And they were amazing. I told them that I didn't want to be pregnant, you know, I didn't want to have a baby. And they just said, OK. Abortion was legalised in the UK in 1967. The pro-life lobby argue abortion goes against the rights of an unborn child. There's been over four and a half million unborn children killed by abortion. Pro-choice groups view legal abortion as a major step forward in women's rights. Before 1967, the Home Office statistics showed that between 30 and 50 women a year died as a result of criminal abortion. Abortion rates increased slightly last year, and nearly 190,000 were performed in England and Wales. When Victoria opted to have an abortion, she felt she was just not ready to cope with becoming a mother. I wasn't willing to give up my life, you know, messed up as it was, I wasn't willing to change it that massively. When she arrived at hospital for her abortion, Victoria was sent for an ultrasound scan. You see people going for a scan on TV or your friends go for a scan when they're pregnant and it's a happy event and they see, they see the baby on the screen and they hear the heartbeat. Um, and so having, having that experience and it being a completely opposite feeling was very strange and it was horrible. Victoria had her abortion and left hospital the same day. A week later, however, she started to experience painful stomach cramps. The pain was so bad that it would wake me up in the night and I was doubled over like in excruciating pain. No painkiller would, would make it better. After three weeks, the pain stopped and she experienced a heavy vaginal discharge. I have no idea what it was, but it was something and it was big. It was round. It was grim. It was nasty. I went to my GP straight away and they basically said that it was remnants of the stuff that they had failed to suck out of my womb, basically, when I'd had the abortion. It was horrifying. What happened to Victoria occurs in just 1% of cases. Despite the complications she went through, she doesn't regret having an abortion. In the seven years since her procedure, she's travelled widely and has met her partner. The couple are now planning their wedding. Abortion is absolutely not a contraceptive choice. It's one of the most important things in the entire world, whether you have a baby or not. Um, you, you have to, you, if you're not, not going to go through with that, you have to justify it. You have to, I, I have to live a better life. <laughs> I was raised up believing I was some In Blackpool, Martin has been building up courage to tell his mum he's gay. Before the big conversation, he visits his counsellor Steve for some advice. Today is Saturn V rocket launch day. We're on the launch pad and we're going for it. Yeah. Because we've built up and it actually doesn't do you any good to keep, you know, to, to stop the launch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, why in the hell? Why can't I just believe say, Mom, I'm gay? Because, because it's approval, isn't it? Mm. You want mum's approval, you don't want to upset mum, but you, mm. you still want mum's love. Well, the scary thing is the reaction. What Omega expects. Is she going to be mad? Is she going to be fine? What is she going to be like? I don't know. It's a very, very, very big day for him today. This coming out process is essential to Martin's development as a human being. It, it's, it's fundamental. You can't live in a society where you're forced into being dishonest about your true emotions and feelings. I, I would value the fact my son told me before I found out through other oh, channels. Oh yeah, one of my friends told, told her, God. Yeah. That would have been awful. 
So it's about honesty. Mm. So, off you go. Handshake. Mm, okay. Go for it, bro. Okay. See you later. Oh. See you. She's like the one person left that I'm so intimidated to tell. And I don't want it to be different with me in any way. So that's why it's a sort of big deal for me. Right now, I just feel ready. Like, just go for it. So I'll leave it for longer. I'm just not going to say anything. It's Karina's 18th birthday, and she's getting ready to meet up with Callum, although their relationship has been strained this week. He hasn't spoken to me all day. I've seen him, not to talk to, but he hasn't he hadn't texted me or anything. <laughs> kind of upset, really. Keeps changing. Karina's mate Becky is good friends with Callum, too. Like when you're upset, and I'll go over to him and be like, oh, this is bothering Karina, that's bothering Karina. The only thing that's bringing me down about is that he's just hardly showing me any affection, but when he does, I'm real happy. Despite their relationship troubles, Karina has high hopes for her special night. I hope tonight's going to be romantic. It's like, I'm going to be there, my boyfriend's going to be there. That's what I want, really. Damn, I'm so excited. We're off to the pendant. <laughs> Your love is like a study Last week, I said it's been a bit odd. She was, she was crying the other day. I'm good mates with this girl, and Karina got a bit upset over it. I, I used to think Karina was all right with it, but it seems to be getting to her. So, hello. Hey. Becky. I need to have words with Becky about some that. After Callum and Karina's rocky week, it's down to Becky to mediate between the two and pass on some reassuring words. He choose you to take his virginity over anybody. Really? Because he was gonna tonight. Yeah. Wait, but tonight? He, yeah. Oh. But he doesn't know whether he should or not because his of things. Yeah. Yeah. She's on a period, so I can't imagine anything actually happening. I love you. I love you too. You see, the thing is, because I'm a virgin, I don't actually know what goes on. <laughs> so it's a bit embarrassing admitting that, but I don't mind. But people have told me it's not a good, you know, it's not nice. There'll be plenty of other times when I could, but... Because I think that you two are going to be together for a hell of a long time. Do you think? Yeah. And he tells me how happy you make him. Really? Yeah. Because I bought him Nuki Brown. No, not just because of that, <laughs> but how happy you just make him in general. <laughs> if I was to lose my virginity, it would be her, because he's the special one. She's the one in my life who I do love. Well, she's the best specimen of the female species. Love her, <laughs> It's the morning after the night before in Kavos, and the lads are off to a water park. But some are struggling with the early start. How can you be so chirpy? <laughs> Rough, I think is the word. It's way too early. Terrible. Not all the lads feel so jaded. Best night all week. Everything about it was just tremendous. For one of the group in particular, the holiday has exceeded expectations. I found someone this week up there. She's uh, yeah, one of the nicest girls I've met. Never really sort of been on a boys' holiday like this, so. I didn't really know what to expect, but you, know, you see from on television, programs, films, they're all sort of one night stands, and so that's what I was sort of expecting. I didn't expect holiday romance, but no, I, I kind of like it, it's, uh, it's good. With one night left, the others are reflecting on their own performance. Is it a disappointment to you that you didn't have sex this week? Yes, <laughs> it is a disappointment, really. Uh, anything can happen. But no night, it will happen. <laughs> Last night on the holiday now, so it's 
it's a bit of a long trip home. I think I'm gonna take it easy tonight. <laughs> Oh, there's been so many highlights this week. Uh, there's been pole dancing, pole dancing with fire up around us. There's been plenty of free alcohol, which is always a bonus. My age group should experience it when you're young. Just, just have fun and enjoy your, your teenage years or your young adulthood, I think. This has just opened my eyes so much now. Um, I want to experience more. <laughs> Where are you running off? I'm off for a rendezvous. With who? I'm a baby lady. I'm off for a rendezvous with a baby lady. This morning, Martin decided to tell his mum he is gay and he was unsure what her reaction would be. Hello? Did you tell your mum? Yeah, but I told her, she, she was out doing Pilates and I was like, waiting out, I was like, crap, you know. And when she came back, I was like, um, I don't know if I go to private, do you? Yeah. 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 Martin has been building up the courage to come out to his mum for over five years. Well, when he first came in, I think it was a bit like, I need to talk to you, mum, and you think, oh my God, what's he done? <laughs> you know, I'm thinking he's done something wrong or he's in trouble with the police or, you know, something. So, yeah, so it wasn't as bad. I think my big thing was like, how do you know? Is it just a phase, you, you know, you're going through? Because I suppose really I wanted him to say, yeah, it's a phase, but really, you know, I'll be like what you want in the end and I'll get married and I'll have grandchildren and then you'll be happy. <laughs> but, you know, you accept these things. But, uh, yeah, I did, I did grill you a bit, didn't I? You did. Oh, it was like half an hour, an hour of questions. <laughs> And stuff on HIV, and mm. have you kissed anyone before? Have you slept with anyone before? I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's what mothers do. <laughs> oh well, no. I mean, we're just the same as we were, really, aren't we? Mm. No difference, is there? Yeah. Still put up with you. <laughs> mm. <laughs> the plan now is to find a nice bloke, good-looking and lovely personality and all that, and just like settle down or have a good relationship. That's like the mission at the moment. Hopefully well, I can start a journey and hopefully it'll be a good one, hopefully. Odell and Andy are fresh back from honeymoon and are adjusting to living together for the first time. So far, so good. Yeah. Okay. I'm getting used to a flat being girlified. <laughs> Good, goodbye to a bachelor pad, so. Yeah. What's the point in having books, pebbles, whatever these are, <laughs> too many beauty products, candles? I don't really see any point in any of this, really. <laughs> After two and a half years together, marriage and moving in is not the only rite of passage Odell and Andy have been through. Yes, we have had sex for the first time. Yes, have we? we have. Yes, we have, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you remember it so well. <laughs> the best way I can say is it evolved and it was fantastic at times and at times it was perhaps laughable. It's <laughs> the best way I can put it. I thought it was going to feel really weird and it was going to feel a bit odd, you know. But actually it didn't feel like that at all. It just felt totally right. But it has been kind of quite funny, like getting embarrassed at chemists and stuff. And <laughs> so I was thinking... Where do they even sell, you know, parts of, I don't know, lubrication and condoms and all that? Where do they even sell it in boots? Because they never bought it before, so they didn't have a clue. And, and then um, you feel naughty going up to the counter. Yeah, and that was all <laughs> quite amusing. So um, Andy, at, as you can probably guess, just, you know, left me to pay and ran off so that I had to do all on my own. I think for us it just reassured us that our decision to wait and our decision to put it into a married life and a strong relationship was the right one. It was really fun. Sex is good. <laughs> it was really fun. Next time, Girls. we explore what happens when we start to play the field. 20 quid, 20 quid. I love exploring sex as, just as much as I love eating, and I love eating. From the pleasures... I've never had an orgasm quite like it. The Valhalla orgasm. 
to the dangers. I was just given this what I thought at the time was a death sentence.